Great. All right. So I'm going to kick off our introductions with Tatiana. Uh, if there's someone who's been prolific in the Math Circles community, it would be her. She has been doing local math circles all the way back to 1998, and she was one of the original co-founders of the Math Teacher Circle Network. Additionally, she's one of the founders of the Alliance of Indigenous Math Circles, and she was one of the primary organizers of the Navajo Math Circles Project. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to kick it off to Tatiana. And Hi, everyone. Uh, Spencer, thank you so much for, for the introduction. So as Spencer said, I started uh, Navajo Nation Math Circle Circle project in uh, 2012, and in 2013 uh, we had our very first uh, summer camp. And when I came right from that uh, summer camp back to the Bay Area, I got a, uh, a phone call from George, a very famous filmmaker, and I was absolutely thrilled. And George said that he he heard about our project and he was interested in talking to me. We had one conversation after which George said that he uh, would try to make a film, uh, a movie about this project, and he did. And it is absolutely powerful. What, what George has done with, with that movie, it's, it's incredible. It's the best possible tool we could ever imagine to spread the word about Navajo people and uh, mathematics that we're trying to, to bring to, to all Navajo students and teachers. Uh, so George, thank you so very much. You, you, you're wonderful, you're the best. Thank you, Tatiana. Um, it was a great experience, and uh, I'm not going to say too much more about the film other than that it was finished in early 2016. We worked on it about two years, and uh, uh, afterwards, I, I guess we'll be able to talk about what has happened to some of the people who were in the film. And um, is there anything more we should say about it, Tatiana? Nope. Um. Uh, well, maybe maybe just one thing, one more thing. Uh, George has really connected with the kids and with the teachers. He, uh, after, uh, I think that he he is uh, he he has been Uncle uh, George for all these kids that you will see in the movie. And after after the movie, you, you you'll be able to hear more about what George uh, knows about uh, about the kids, what happened to them. Uh, it's been a while, and they are now adults and doing very well. And he'll talk. Uh, George will tell you about that. Okay, so uh, maybe uh, before we get into that too much, uh, we should get the film going, and we'll be back afterwards. Great, perfect. So now I think we're going to take an opportunity to transition over to Q and A with the director George. If anyone has any questions for George, you could either type them in chat. Or if you're so inclined, you can go over to the tab on the right side that says participants, and you can actually raise your hand if you have a question. So that way you can just raise your hand, we can call you up, you can ask your question of George, and they can answer on the spot. Perfect. So let's see, do we have any kind of questions or any kind of comments to get us started? Oh, it looks like we have our first question in the chat. Um, Nanette's asking, how did you first hear about the Navajo Math Circles, George? Yes, well, I, I was um, attending a joint mathematics meeting in San Diego in uh, early 2012 when uh, mathematician Joe Bueller, who you see in the film uh, teaching uh, juggling and talking about uh, uh, Fermat's last theorem uh, to one of the classes, to one of the workshops at the math circles, he told me that uh, there was this very interesting project that he knew a little bit about on uh, the reservation. That and uh, he mentioned Tatiana as uh, as having initiated this uh, this program. And uh, perhaps he thought, well, maybe it might make a nice film. And I filed that away. And a few months later, uh, I. Uh, uh, contacted Tatiana, as she said before the film, uh, had a meeting with her and was convinced right away that this would be interesting. Uh, uh, and then uh, within uh, six months, I was able to to convince both the um, uh, MSRI, Mathematical Sciences Research Institute, 
and Vision Maker Media, which is a, a native broadcasting consortium, uh, not, nothing to do with mathematics, to, to join in supporting the project and making it possible for us to go ahead. All right, uh, we have another question in chat. This one might be um, good for George and maybe also Tatiana to answer. And that's Danielle asking, how did you introduce the idea of mass circles to the schools, students, and the parents? I think that's one for Tatiana. Um, uh, is it maybe possible to get Tatiana to uh, come up for a second? You should be able to unmute your microphone and camera if you're so inclined. Thank you very much. Well, um, I uh, came to the reservation and spoke with uh, with a few people uh, at sco different schools, and they had absolutely no idea what I was talking about. But uh, fortunately, in a couple of schools, they were interested enough to let me run uh, sort of a you know, like mock circle a demonstration and after that demonstration they said okay if you come next year uh we will let you start a, an after school enrichment program and i did i i spent uh spent my sabbatical on the reservation and ran mass circles and it wasn't easy one one uh, group of people who we op almost never got in, in touch with were parents uh, that changed when George came, and George was able to connect with parents. Maybe George can tell you how he did that. Well, uh, Tatiana, isn't it true that you you had a request from a parent uh, even before you started the program, and that that first got you in, into the area? Uh, oh yeah, that's 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 right. That's right. the The thing is that uh, that community is kind of you know like it's it's a tricky thing to start anything in that community, you have to be introduced into the community. You cannot just come out of the blue and, and tell, well, I, I have this great idea, I, I'm going to do something for you. It won't work. So uh, th there was an organization that still is, and I believe that Spencer is running it now, is the director of it now. It's called uh, National Association of Mass Circles. And uh, one of the things that that organization was doing for a while, uh, they we have it had annual meetings in different places. Uh, in 2010, their meeting was in Phoenix, and uh, some woman from Navajo Reservation somehow learned about that uh, that uh, meeting, and she brought her son. At that time, her son was in high school. She brought him to the to to that uh, to to that meeting, and one of the things that they ran at the meeting was. Uh, Julia Robinson Mass Festival, and uh, her son participated in that, and also participated in a couple of mass circles uh, during that uh, that that meeting, that conference. So um, she, uh, when when, uh, when I, I wanted to go to the reservation, I I got in touch electronically with that via email with that woman, and she was thrilled with the idea, and she connected me with with a number of, uh, of uh, educators in, in schools, in various schools on the reservation. We have another question in chat. I think I'm gonna tweak this question slightly to make it a two-parter. Uh, Danielle's asking, are there any mass circles where parents, family, uh, parents and families are invited to uh, attend and participate? I'm gonna first ask for the purposes of this film, were there any opportunities that you actually were able to work with the students and the parents at once? No, I, I have to admit, no. The, one of the problems is that parents really uh, are, as, as you probably noticed, uh, Bob Klein said that it's a very impoverished population. Uh, parents uh, have a hard time uh, making uh, ends meet. They do not have any extra time. They cannot really spare any time and come to the, just to, to a thing that they are not sure about. One of the things that we are trying to change that situation or, you know, like make sure that parents are involved is through uh, inviting them to Julia Robinson Mass Festivals, which they do enjoy a lot, and uh, in we we are trying, we are trying various ways to in, to involve them, but so far it's been hard. I'll make a note that at 
three thirty Pacific Standard Time. So I believe in about um, an hour fifteen, some change from here. Uh, we'll actually be talking about the math communities efforts being done right now, and that includes a lot of efforts of getting more um, uh, involvement from parents in the kind of like a math circle esque experience. So if you have more questions on that, I would direct you to maybe try to attend our three thirty Pacific Standard Time uh, session. Um, any kind of more comments you would want to say on that question, either Tatiana or George? Yes, I, I'd like to um, reinforce the, the idea that Tatiana brought up of, about the impact of, of uh, poverty in, on the reservation. And uh, I, I think it's uh, very well put in the film by Bob Klein, who says that the effects of poverty are, are, um, are definitely an important factor in the ability of the students to to attend, to participate in these programs. And we experienced that for uh, the filmmaking as well. There were times where we made appointments with people at a certain gas station and uh, waited there two or three hours and didn't show up. Well, the reason was that they didn't have the gas to get there and were too embarrassed to tell us. And so um, it, it took me a few days to, to understand that um, you know, I, I had to make an offer to cover the cost of the the gasoline and and provide a lunch or some some meal or to to make it possible even possible for for a family to show up for an interview. Uh, this is the kind of thing that if you live in a in a comfortable urban or su suburban environment, you you don't even think of. But uh, it, when you, when you're faced with these uh, problems, you learn about it and you understand how uh, poverty, what the impact of poverty on the lives of the people. So that's just one example. I'd actually like to follow up for a second and ask, um, you mentioned the gas. Were there other little things that you were able to notice during this uh, experience that were able to help families participate more? Well, I, certainly uh, feeding people is a big help. Offering food for for a large family is, you know, takes an awful lot of burden off of them, and and they uh, they open up more. And uh, I had that experience repeatedly. Um, I think that uh, the uh, the other thing is just to let people know that you are listening to them, that you you are hearing what they say. And when, again, we, we live in a culture where everybody talks over everyone else all the time and nobody has any time to think. Uh, and on the Navajo reservation, we, we observed, what I observed is that people take the time to think about what they're going to answer, what they're going to tell you. Mm -hmm. And uh, it really pays off to, to keep quiet and listen. Hmm. See. I'm going to move on to our next question from Joanna, which is, how do you choose problems that are developmentally appropriate for the students in your groups? And uh, I think I'm going to slightly add, uh, I kind of would like to see if maybe you could talk about like uh, age, but also talk about how you specifically kind of catered this to like, you know, the students on your reservation specifically, or on the reservation. Well, Joanna, I think that you will learn a lot about it uh, during this, this week at, at AIM. Because this is exactly what we, we've been doing with, uh, with the help of teachers, with the help of mathematicians. We are all together in this endeavor and we are consulting with each other all the time. We are trying it with different groups. Uh, quite often the, the problems that we brought to, well, almost always, the problems that we brought to the reservation, we have tried previously at different groups. So we already knew uh, what would be, what would be, would be the response. Uh, and also we, you, you know, like when you present any problem whatsoever, you just look at, at the reaction. You look at what kids do with that problem and you can change it on uh, the, the change, the, the, the change you presented that problem. You can, you can twist it a little bit so that they, it becomes appropriate for the audience. Okay. Oh, we have another question from Nanette. Do you keep in touch with the students, teachers, or families in the film? If so, can you share any updates on them? Uh, specifically, any accomplishments you might want to brag about? Tatiana, you go first. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, we do have, you know, like, um, the, I don't know whether you remember all the names. Uh, our cover girl, so to speak, uh, is, uh, it's, it's the girl who had 
uh, I had to go on on foot from uh, from a main road to her house where the the road became very very muddy and she is the very last person in the movie she said that she learned that that she was smart eventually and that she she is thinking that everyone yeah that's her that's her so charmaine uh right after she graduated she she got admitted to uh asu arizona state university uh and her major is uh, biomedical engineering and um now, George, do you remember what is her status right now? Uh, I understand that she's a, a junior. She's starting her junior year, uh, and she's taking courses at another college, uh, summer courses, so she can get back into the uh, senior or junior year, I think. And um, uh, she's living in Tempe, and I talked to her mother about a week ago, um, I'm very concerned about the health issues on the reservation because they have been very hard hit by the virus. Um, but I think she's doing fine. Everybody seems to be happy with her work. I know there are several mathematicians monitoring her, so uh, um, she's she's one of the people that everyone got attached to uh, in the course of doing this film and and the, and the summer camps too. I think. The, the last last year, 2020 and 2021, uh, was the year where two of the kids became a freshman at, at different colleges. One of them was Natani, and he was admitted to Stanford University. So he, he actually successfully finished his first year at Stanford University. His major was engineering. Um, last year, Natani with George and, and me was in, in Washington, D.C., where we had screening of this movie at the uh, Smithsonian. Uh, what's the exact name of the? It's the Museum of the American Indian. Yeah, thank you, George. And um, at that time, when uh, I, uh, when we were in DC, I asked uh, uh, Natani what was important for him in in all these interactions with with different people he met through mass circles and and mass camp. And he said one of the things that he learned, and it was very, very important for them, is, was that professors are people too. And then they can be approached, they can be talked to, and it really liberated him. He, it, it, made, it enabled him to uh, talk to the w various people before he chose the school he wanted to go to and be before he decided on what major he wanted to choose. And another person, uh, Irva Linda, the girl who was running and whose grandfather was talking to, to uh, about growing corn, if you remember her, uh, she was, we were very, very proud of her. She became our very first math major. She was admitted to, uh, to Colorado State University in Fort Collins. Now, uh, her fate also shows all the many problems that these kids have. She is the first generation uh, in, in, in college. She had absolutely no idea how to uh, fill out all those you know, infinite amount of forms. And because of that, she had real trouble with financing her way in the university, which shouldn't be the case. She deserves all help possible to her. And, but but that, was, that was the case because, because she needed more help and we didn't realize that. Irva Linda is a is a, a, a someone who whose family is really impoverished. There are a lot of kids, and and uh, it, it was always very difficult for her to to um, uh, get to school to to stay in school because of the family issues. And um, she did a few years in boarding school before uh, Fort Collins. I understand, right at Navajo Tech. It was it two or three years, Tatiana, that she was there? Uh, in, in where? At Navajo Tech. Oh, uh, yeah, in Navajo yeah. Prep. Navajo Prep, she was there for for two or three years, yes. yes. Yeah. And, yeah, and that was a boarding, it was a boarding situation which, which really helped um, her uh, education because uh, it was one of those uh, cases where it, it, her, her mother um, for months at a time did not have a car. Um, and maybe doesn't today. And so this this is the kind of uh, 
story that you see over and over again. But she, I, I think we're all very proud of her. And she's going to be starting her second year, possibly online. And uh, last last summer, uh, when we had our uh, Navajo, uh, our summer camp at Navajo Prep School, both Natani and Erbalinda served as junior mentors at the school, and they did a fantastic job there. Now, I want to uh, uh, bring up uh, Buddy Joe, who is um, uh, the tall boy at, early in the film, talk, uh, who um, talked about uh, patterns and uh, finding patterns uh, and the tiles, and um, and he he has sort of a religious approach. Um, he has gone off to college and then come back to become a math teacher at uh, uh, St. Michael's School. And uh, we, we stopped to visit him in January, and he runs a, a program where he was proud to show us the room where he works with little kids. Um, and hopefully that will continue. I wanted to touch on something that Tatiana said. Would you feel comfortable maybe saying how the current state of the, um, how the COVID-19 epidemics impacted these communities specifically? Um, and maybe any kind of notes on how it's impacted with regards to students and teachers in the American indige indigenous communities? Well, they, they are hit very, very hard. Not only Navajo Reservation, as you probably all know, but uh, inside the Navajo Reservation, there is a much smaller reservation, which is Hopi Reservation. And Hopi is a small, relatively small tribe. It's only about 12,000 people live inside that reservation. But it's been the, the longest continuously uh, practiced culture in Northern America and the longest pl the, the place where people have, have been living con uh, constantly, the, the longest. Now, that community was hit even harder because they live in, in villages and in small villages and very close proximities to each other. And they are very, you know, they, they're even more impoverished than in general than, than Navajo people. So it's very, very hard for all of them. And um, what makes it much harder is that only about 80% of people on, on these, in these places, on uh, not only on Navajo Reservation, but also in uh, Pueblo Reservation, uh, in the Pueblos in northern New Mexico that we work with also, uh, only 80% of people there have access to internet. So, which means that when, when, they, when the school year starts and the schools are not coming back to, you know, physically, 80% of the kids will not have any access to any education whatsoever. And those 20% that uh, claim that they do have uh, internet connection. Well, it's it's very poor quality. The internet connection is mostly they have to drive in their cars to some spot where there is an in uh, the internet connection on there, and they use their hotspots. But it's not always reliable. It's not all. Uh, I should probably say it's almost always non-reliable. So I think that we, as larger community, should try and do something about it we should probably approach our uh, our you know you know respective governments we should uh, try to write to our senators uh, and as a you know like as a whole community and we need to support those people those teachers and the, those students if we don't do that well this next generation of these people probably will be so much behind that no amount of our future work with them will help. I, I would also like to add that you know, not only is the internet a problem, uh, uh, something like half of the people on both of those reservations uh, live in uh, crowded households uh, with no running water. And this is a contributing factor, a problem, particularly with the epidemic when you have 10 to 15 people living in a small house, uh, sharing everything with no running water, it's it's very dangerous and, uh, with the virus running around. Oh, I see that we have a new question from Graham, and that's, are the teachers that you did the mass circles with still running the mass circles? Are you aware of any mass circles still ongoing in that community? Yes, there are a few, not many, but 
again, I, I don't know what happened with most of them. I believe that most of them had to stop with the COVID situation. But um, but before the COVID, there were a few circles. And uh, it's, it's hard for those teachers to engage in anything, you know, beyond their schoolwork. But they were they were so much impressed with my circles that they were trying nevertheless and uh we were hoping that more and more of the of the circles would sprung uh, would, would spring up but with covid that that's not the case i'm i'm afraid but again who knows i'm going to ask if there are any other questions from our participants we still have a couple minutes left Um, while well, we're looking to see if there are any more questions, uh, any last comments that either of you'd like to share? Okay. Well, we're going to have, I believe, three more sessions later today. We're going to have another session at 3.30 Pacific Standard Time where we'll talk about a lot more of the outreach efforts being done by the American Institute of Mathematics. This can touch on a lot of the topics that were covered today, things like what can I do about online math circles, um, ideas of getting parents and students kind of working on math circles together. Uh, we'll have two speakers at the end of the day for parallel sessions. We'll have Scott Kim, who will be doing the Game of Life. And then we'll also have uh, uh, Maria. I'm apologizing. I wish I wrote down her last name because I always mispronounce it, I mispronounce it and I would rather not do that on stream. Uh, but Maria's of Natural Math and she's also done several online math circles, so maybe a good person to check out. And then, oh, uh, let's see, we have another question. George, are you working on a film right now? Um, I'm working on a couple of films. Um, we f recently finished a film um, uh, about Maria Mizakhani called Secrets of the Surface. Uh, which is a mathematics-related film. It's a biography of a very important mathematician. Um, it, you can look it up on the web, Secrets of the Surface, and it's an amazing story about an amazing person. Um, and we are currently developing a project with uh, MSRI about African-American mathematicians. And uh, we... We're in the research phase and we are ready to do a couple of shoots, but COVID is preventing travel and uh, uh, organizing for the shoots. And one of our early shoots is, uh, that we planned is in uh, uh, Buffalo, New York. And uh, as of now, uh, um, those of us from California are not allowed to enter the state of New York. So we're waiting. Um. Answering uh, a question from Stephen, uh, Maria Juskova's session, uh, session is going to be um, one of our last sessions of the day. You can find the link for that on our web on our web page, which I'll be posting in chat. We had a few sessions that we added, including Maria's. You can find all of those again on the teachers online workshop page. We update that with a, a bright orange button on the top, which will have links to go into the session. All right. Uh, so I'd like to thank you both, George and Tatiana. Uh, this was great. The film was lovely to watch. It was actually my first time watching. Um, yeah. And I believe if people want to reach out, I think your emails are something that are pretty easy to find. Um, yes. Or, or but you, you could post their emails if you if you like. I think uh, I, I, I welcome any questions and I, I'm sure Tatiana does too. Sure. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye.